Welcome back to Easy Astro. Uh, so today I've got a pretty special unboxing. This is a Ioptron GEM28EC. Uh, I've been using a Celestron AVX for several years now. I have torn the AVX apart on multiple occasions trying to get the RMS better. I've just done all sorts of things to it trying to get it better and I can never get it below one arc second of RMS error. And so since I was able to pay myself some back pay out of my business, I decided that I was going to go ahead and pull the trigger on this mount that I've been wanting for a while. So this, this mount says that it has a total RMS of 0 0.3. So that will be fantastic in the field. All right, let's do this unboxing. So as I said, this is the, uh, the GEM 28EC telescope mount and one of the things that I really really like that I have never had in any other telescope mount which you guys will see here in a second is instead of sending it in a box with styrofoam they sent it in this handy little case so I'm pretty excited about that so here's the case and I'm gonna flip it this way so that you guys can see it Okay, so let's open this up. So first thing I'm greeted with is the quick start guide. So I don't, I'll probably read that later. Uh, so some of the things it says on here, so it contains the telescope mount hand controller, the tripod, which is in a box over here, a 10.4 pound counterweight, Counterweight shaft, shaft extension, control cables, USB 2.0, has built-in Wi-Fi, uh, has an optional GPS unit, I don't think I have that. And then, let's see if it tells me what's special about this mount. Okay, so this is actually uh, about a week later. I recorded all the stuff for the video and went back to put it together in my editing program and found out that apparently the entire unboxing with the exception of the first part that you just saw was not recorded so this is actually kind of a week after I unboxed it and did first images but now I can explain the mount a little bit better so as you see we got the hard case and then we have this this foam insert right here really high quality foam it's not gonna you know fall apart anytime soon zoom out a little bit so high quality foam it's not gonna fall apart anytime soon on the top we have our leg spreader nice steel leg spreader we have a counterweight bar as well as a extension for the counterweight bar just in case you need to extend it for a little bit more balancing uh, so that's that top piece. Underneath, you have the actual mount. So as I said, this is actually several weeks, or a, a week, about a week and a half after I actually uh, got the mount. And so I've already learned a little bit. I put not only, this came with the mount, this uh, Allen wrench, but I put this set of Allen wrenches in here as well so that I can... Uh, do different things like for instance I'll explain what this is here in a minute but uh, the Allen wrench set I use for this and I'll explain that here in a minute but in this pocket right here we have the keys to lock and unlock the case which I'm not really going to use because it's never going to leave my sight I keep the Allen wrenches and everything in there and then we have our power brick which I think I'm going to purchase a couple spare power bricks it's uh, not Ioptron brand it's a uh, I guess off-brand it's really really light I would expect it to be a little bit heavier but it's uh, 12 volt 5 amp uh, yeah output is 12 volts at 5 amps so that's the power brick and then you have your counterweight this counterweight is an 11 pound counterweight I do believe this is the heaviest part 
And then we have our hand controller, which hand controller is a little bit different than the other ones, but overall, same kind of setup. Uh, for instance, the Celestron and the Skywatcher mounts, I'm used to moving with the two, six, eight, and four buttons, moving the actual selections of the menu. And then this using for the telescope, moving the telescope. On this hand controller, this is used for not only moving the telescope, but also going through the menus and stuff. Uh, unfortunately, there's no way to hook USB to the mount itself, which I'm not too fond of, considering I prefer to just skip the hand controller uh, permanently, but at least the hand controller is USB, so I don't have to have an auxiliary cable and all that stupid crap like I do for my, uh, like I did for my Celestron C gem. So, power brick, and then you have this right here. This is the cord for the actual hand controller to plug into the mount. I'll set that there. Then you have this. This is the cord to plug your declination to the uh, computer chip so that you're able to run both RA and declination. Other half of the power cable, just a regular computer style power cable. And then this is the uh, Pole Master adapter for this because as I said, the iPolar is just, I am not at all impressed with the iPolar so far. Uh, I'll find out when I go camping this coming uh, here in a few weeks. I'll find out when I get to test it in a dark, dark sky site and I will uh, relay my findings to you guys. But as it stands right now, I'm gonna stick with the Pole Master. That's what this adapter piece is for. And then this is the actual mount itself, which I will take it out. Let me move this. All right, so this is the actual mount. All right, so I'll put it on this side first. So here you have the declination for that uh, small cable plugs into your declination here and then into this declination port to, so you can control your declination. This is a 12 volt out, which I did not know about until just a little bit ago tonight, uh, that apparently it, it you can plug things into your mount and, and power them off the mount itself. This is your guide port. If you're one of those, pe uh, one of those people that use the Ethernet cables, I guess, is what, what you use your phone cables to do your guiding as opposed to USB. Uh, and then on this side, you have a port that they called iPort. I'm not sure what this is used for. Uh, maybe some of you guys, if you have a similar mount, iOptron mount, maybe you can tell me what the iPort is for. You have your HBX, which is your hand controller. And then you have your power in, 12 volts in. And then on this side, you have your power switch right there with an LED LED up here. Tell you when it's on and off. Uh, and then you have your iPolar right here, which I'm sure, I'm sure the camera is perfectly fine, probably comparable to the, uh, to the Pole Master. But as I said, the program just, it, it's just garbage in my opinion. I really hope they take the time to revamp that so that uh, it's a much better software, much more user intuitive. Uh, one of the things I do like is they put the bubble level on here, right here. I know that these round bubble levels are almost useless, but it at least gives me an idea of if I'm somewhat level. I know there's better ways to do level, but I'm I'm fine with the bubble level. And then you have these bolts right here. So on most mounts, you would have on the bottom right here, you'd have a hole right here that would have a bolt on your mount that you would push up into the hole and then you would tighten. And that's what would hold the mount to the tripod. Well, Ioptron's a little bit different. There's, there is a hole here, but there's no the bolt doesn't screw in there. So instead, they opted to go for these two bolts on the side right here, these bolts, and basically where they're at right now is just a placeholder, it's so you don't lose them. But if you unscrew them, which I don't really want to unscrew them because it takes forever, 
uh, they go into these slots right here and it allows you to clamp down on two sides onto the tripod but also allows you a little bit of motion so you can move your telescope back and forth to get polar aligned. Uh, one of my complaints is these bolts along here are very very smooth so they your fingers slip on them if it's a little bit too tight. I wish they would have textured the, that part of the bolts that way you can do this more finger tight than having to use a tool all the time. But, you know, that's just one of those little petty things that I wish they would do. And I'm sure I could probably just do that myself if I really wanted to take the time, but I don't really care that much. Uh, one of the other things I noticed is the locking mechanisms of these mounts, which is right here, is different than most other mounts. So most other mounts, you have that uh, that lever that you it screws in and out to tighten and, and loosen your declination and your RA. Well, this one is actually completely different. Instead, you have this little latch that clicks, lets go of the uh, RA or the declination, but what's really weird is when you pop it up, when you go to relock it like this, then it's completely locked. But let's say you don't want to lock it to that position, you want to put it a little bit past that, then there's that possibility where you can be right in the middle of it. Like, it's a little hard to show, but there's part, it's, it's like a gear on the inside, I believe, and this locking mechanism, like, like right here. So if I wanted to lock it right here, I can't. I can't go past that. So I have to move it to actually lock it fully. I'm not too fond of that. When you have the screw and you have the rubber stopper in there, you're able to, to put it in any position that you want. But this one just has set positions, which in the long run is probably fine. See right here, I can't do anything until I turn it until I reach one of those holes or one of those gears or teeth or whatever it is, can't do anything until I get to one of those. So that's a little annoying, but it's not the end of the world. And both sides are like that. And here's the one for declination. But overall, uh, the mount is advertised as a RMS of 0.3. I have not experienced that yet. I've used the mount probably three times now in my backyard with the best polar alignment I can get with my pole master. The best guiding that I've gotten on PhD two was about 1.3, 1.2 1 to 1.5 RMS. Of course that can also be blamed on the seeing the light pollution, the regular pollution, cause there's a ton of it here in Phoenix. Uh, so the seeing is usually not really good in the city. Uh, the transparency is usually not very good in the city. But I will get a true taste of how good the guiding on this is come the camping trip here in a few weeks. And I'll report back to you guys what RMS error I get from there. But yeah, this is the mount. Uh, so like I said, it's this was my... Uh, third attempt actually to do the unboxing because of camera issues so that was my unboxing um, I'm going to do uh, another video of first light like I said I've already imaged for several nights already and I've got some footage from that so I will be putting out another video here probably in the next couple days first light experience uh, it didn't go as well as I would like it to go but uh, thank you guys for watching don't forget to like and subscribe to the video if you actually liked uh, the video. And uh, also if you're looking for new gear, I have a High Point Scientific link down in the description. It's an affiliate link, so if you guys use that link to purchase anything, I get a little bit of a kickback to help me afford these extravagant items that, that I purchase. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next video.